for your mercy never fail me all my days i've been held in your hands from the moment that i wake up until i lay my head oh i will sing of the goodness of god to go to our pledge. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is such a pleasure to be with you again another night. Good evening to those who are joining online, those in far distant lands. We are thankful that we have you and we trust that we will continue to walk in the fear of the Lord. Are we together, everybody? Are we ready? Do we know this? Some of us know it. All right, let's see. Let's put it up on the screen. Everybody, we're saying my? I have been. My present is who I choose to be. My My future is who I I will become. So I choose to rise above above my circumstance. Uh Uh-huh. I choose the day to to overcome. overcome. Amen. Very good. Very good. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Loving God and Father, we are so thankful for you tonight. We're thankful that we are overcomers. We're thankful, O God, that another night we're here to hear from you. I ask God that you will hide me behind your cross. Speak through me, O Lord. Speak to me and help that we all will be transformed by your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, you may have your seats. Tonight's message is captioned what? When women weep. Hmm. 
When women do what? Weep. Let me see the women in the house who could have real cry. That's supposed to be all women, no, you know? Why do you weep privately or publicly, you know? As a woman, one of the things that you must learn to do is to weep in your pillows, all right? Folks must not see you crying, all right? Weep in your sheets. They will keep your stories. But when women weep, we begin tonight on a very sad note. Jesus died, and his body was placed in a borrowed tomb, belonging to Joseph of Arimathea. Imagine this man would have built a tomb for himself, that is Joseph, but he had to now lend it to Jesus. Notice I said lend it, because when you borrow something you intend to do what give it back so give back that lady she rolling pin you borrow so long intend to give it back are we going to the text where we pick up the story in luke chapter 23 as we understand what is happening luke 23 52 to 56 and the bible says reader this man went unto pilate uh-huh and begged the body of jesus go on and he took it down and, and wrapped it in linen and did what and laid it in a sepulcher that, that was, was hewn in stone wherein never man before was laid that's true and that day was the preparation and, and the, the sabbath, sabbath drew, drew on. on the bible continues and the women also, also which came from with him from galilee uh -huh. followed after and what happened and beheld the sepulcher and, and how his body was laid and this is what they did and they returned and prepared spices and, and ointments, ointments and rested the sabbath day according, according to the commandment to the commandment jesus followers as we discussed last night were unprepared for his crucifixion they were also unprepared for his burial. While the men disassociated themselves from Jesus, the female disciples followed the body of their Lord. It was important for them to know the resting place so that they could return and bring spices to throw on the body so it will preserve longer and smell better. But by the time they went home and finished preparing the spices, the Bible says that the Sabbath drew on. And as commandment keepers, they decided that they were going to rest on the Sabbath. People often ask me, Pastor, how do you know that Saturday is the seventh day and that it is the Sabbath? And it's often important for us to even look at this crucifixion story to see how that is a fact. The Bible says that day was preparation day. I have a question to ask, and let me see who can answer me very quickly. What day is Good Friday? A Friday. Good Friday is a Sunday or a Tuesday? A what? Friday. A Friday. Just check it. <laughs> right. So we know we say the Good Friday was a Friday, the day that Jesus was crucified. And let us read the Bible it says in John chapter 20, verse 1. What happened there? The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early. When it was yet dark. Uh-huh. Unto the sepulchre and, and see the, the stone taken away from, from the sepulchre. From the sepulchre. So watch this very carefully. Is that we know Jesus was resurrected on which day of the week? On the 
first day of the week. But we also know the day. What's the name of the day? Sunday. On Sunday. So if Jesus was crucified on a Friday and he was resurrected on a Sunday, then which day comes between Friday and Sunday? Sabbath. Which day? Saturday. Saturday, which is the seventh day. day, which is the the Sabbath. So that is the easiest way to figure out how is it that the seventh day is Saturday and is the Sabbath. So just at that crucifixion weekend was the indication that there was the presence or the understanding of which day is the Sabbath day. Ladies and gentlemen, if you recall, we talked about on Sunday night that Jesus rested at the end of creation and now at redemption, Jesus also rested. So we have that. We know that the entire Christendom believed that Jesus was crucified on a Friday. And so we have that point established. But we're getting to the woman that has come to the tomb. Who came to the tomb? Mary. Mary. Mary came to that tomb. Mary came very early that Sunday morning because Mary longed for her Lord. Mary came to that tomb because the one who freed her from her sins was enchained by death. Mary came to the house of death, but she did not find the life giver. The Bible tells us that when this happened, verse 2, John chapter 20, verse 2, what happened? Then she did what? Runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and, and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre and we, we know not where they have laid him. Immediately, friends, Mary runs to find the disciples of Jesus and tells them that the body of their Lord is missing. When they heard the news, Peter and John decided to do a sprint to the sepulchre. They ran to see what was going on. When they arrived, they both saw that the tomb was empty. And they saw that in that tomb was the linen clothes lying there. It was undisturbed. And even the napkin that was wrapped about Jesus' head was also lying there. And as they looked looked into the tomb they saw nothing but clothes the tomb was empty and so what did they do they returned home but mary returned to the tomb let us pick up the narrative reader but Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and uh -huh. looked into the sepulchre. And what happened? And see it two angels in white sitting, the, the one, one at, at the, the head, head and, and the, the other, other at, at the, the feet, feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Uh-huh, go on. And they say unto her, What did they say, Rita? Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, uh -huh. and I know not where they have laid him. Mary returns to the, woo, to, to the tomb, and Mary begins to weep. She is weeping for her Lord because she longs for her Lord. She weeps because she does not know where she is, where he is. As she is weeping, she looks into the tomb and guess what Mary sees? <laughs> Mary sees two angels sitting not only does Mary see two angels sitting, she is seeing two angels that are uh, at their posture of 
perfect rest. These angels are just resting, sitting there in the tomb. This seems to be a bit confusing because everywhere we look in the Bible, we see that, that angels are busy. Ladies and gentlemen, Mary knew God's voice. Jesus wants to do the same for us tonight. He wants to know, are you surrendered and available? Because he has a message for you. He has a what? Jesus has a message to give you. We come to church looking good on Sabbath morning. Sometimes there is so much brokenness, baggage, and issues on the inside. But it is unlikely God can use you greatly unless you have been broken deeply. Can I say that again? It is unlikely that God can use you greatly unless you have been broken deeply. Jesus went to Mary in the midst of her brokenness seven times and he delivered her. He delivered her. Jesus went to her in her brokenness seven times to prepare her to deliver one message that will change the world. I want to say to somebody tonight that don't come God out of your situation. He will use you in the time he has appointed for you. Don't give up on God because he has not given up on you. Amen. Well, let me tell you about what happens to us as Christians sometimes. We have suddenly made the gospel about us. Our sufferings, our trials, our struggles, our challenges. We are full the church is filled with folks who come just to be ministered to. They have nothing to give out. But the Bible says that when we come into the house of God, we are to enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. When you show up in the sanctuary of God, we leave our burdens down and we raise our voices in praise because we understand had it not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know what I would have done. I want to say to somebody tonight that Jesus stopped by to give you a resurrection power to grow and tell. Jesus has passed by here this evening to say, stop wallowing in your misery. I have a message to give to you. I want to encourage the ladies here tonight, especially the ladies who are in purple. I want to say to you tonight to embrace the ministry. Never lose sight of the one who has called you. When the noise against your ministry on the outside matches the confusion that's inside your head, remember his voice. It is Jesus who calls and commissions you for his great work. Never doubt in the daylight what God has confirmed to you at the, sepul the sepulchre. Mary converse with angels all of heaven. I say all of heaven is ready to cooperate with you to get out the gospel commission. Once you are ready for it, never doubt what God can do through you. Never doubt that all God's biddings are his enablings. He has called you and he will equip you. In Jesus name. Jesus says to her in John 20 verse 17, touch me not for I am not yet ascended to my father but go to my brethren and say unto them I ascend to my father and to your father and to my God and your God. Jesus gave Mary a woman 
the greatest message of the Christian faith. <laughs> Sometimes what Jesus does makes no sense. But that's why he is God. Our job is simply to surrender to him. Why did this not make sense to give a message to a woman? Because a woman in Jewish society was seen as an unfit witness. She was an unacceptable witness. She couldn't give, even give evidence in the court of law. A woman was not a credible witness. Women were told to shut up in church. Yet Jesus gave her, a woman, the resurrection message. Jesus chose a witness who was not accepted culturally. Jesus chose a witness who was not acceptable to the church. Jesus chose a witness who was not acceptable to the court and to come matters even worse there was no collaborating witness to her testimony nobody saw or heard exactly what Mary saw and heard but Jesus gave a woman who was not a credible witness to the church the greatest message of the human race Jesus is alive it is time it is time and the women of the church of the living God stop acting like you are second class citizens in the kingdom of God. It is time that we stop treating each other as second class citizens. Jesus gave her the message on which we hang our hope. It is in the 6,000 years of recorded human history. It is the most important message that has ever been given. He is not here. He is risen. Hallelujah, my friends. Our God is risen. That was the most important message because Paul says that if there was no message for a risen Savior, then it really does not make sense. He says if Christ is not risen, guess what? Our preaching is in vain. Our faith is meaningless. We are yet in our sins, and the dead who are asleep are perished. But thanks be to God that we know that Jesus is reckoned is risen from the dead. He says, if he, if our hope, you can imagine, if our hope was in this life only. Then we are of all men most miserable and we should be pitied. But we can praise and we can acknowledge that our God is alive. Amen. Jesus says to Mary, who wants to cling to him, he says, Don't hold me back, Mary. I have settled the score on earth. I need to settle it in heaven. Oh, yes. Go tell my disciples, I ascend unto my father and your father and my God and your oh, God. God. Have you ever wondered? Why did Jesus have to go back to heaven first before appearing to the other disciples? Tell me, well, let me tell you. Remember, Jesus was on his way to heaven. And when he heard Mary crying, he did what? Inconvenience himself and turned back. Love me, son Jesus. What was it that needed to be settled? The wave offering. As part of the sanctuary services, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 10 to 11 tells us this. Read on. Speak unto the children of Israel and mm -hmm. say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you and shall reap the harvest thereof, mm -hmm. then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priests. Verse 11. And ye shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath. The priest shall wave it. Let me teach you this part. On the first, on the first day of the week, immediately.
if you follow in the Passover, the priest will take some of the wheat that was growing in the field. He will wave this before the Lord, and it symbolized that that was the first fruits, and that there will be more to follow. Hebrews chapter 9 piles this service. When Jesus ascended unto heaven, he stepped into his father's presence, offering his blood upon the mercy seat as the perfect and final atonement for the sins of mankind. Jesus became the ultimate way of offering before the heavenly father. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 23 tells us, but every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, Christ the first fruits, afterwards they that are Christ were at his coming. When Jesus appeared in heaven before the father, he presented himself as the way of offering. He presented himself as the first fruit. He presented the himself as the first one to overcome. So that if I am the first, guess what that means? There's going to be a second. There's going to be a third. There's going to be 10,000 times 10,000 more to come. Jesus presented himself as the ultimate sacrifice, as the one who has overcome. Therefore, you and I, by loving obedience will follow. That's the message he gave to a woman. It sounds like good news to me. It sounds like the gospel to me. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the gospel given to Mary. That is the gospel given to us. It is therefore our duty to tell the world about a crucified, risen, and soon coming Savior. It is not based on gender, but it is based on God's agenda. It is a task commissioned by our Savior. No matter your skin color, no matter your race, and no matter whether you are male or female, he has called us to go tell the world. And as he calls us to go tell the world, he says, I will commission you to do so. I will pour out my spirit. Joel 2, 28 and 29, the Bible tells us, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And watch this. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days I will pour out my spirit. The spirit of God is available today to be poured out on any vessel that is willing to be surrendered to God. Amen. If the vessel is broken, he says, come. I am your potter. I will put you back together again. If the vessel is loose tonight, he says, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. If your vessel is weary, he says, come unto me all who that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So if the vessel is dead, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Ladies and gentlemen, I declare to every child of God today that the reason of your past, that the season of your past is over. I declare that it's time you start looking back on the tomb of your past failure and look to the glorious future that God has for you. It's about time you stop allowing you to allowing the enemy to have you enchained by your past mistakes and accept the freedom that Christ offers because he says that we are free by Jesus. We are with a son sets free is free I don't know your life worries and your life problems. You see all of us here, 
It all differs from Mary's situation when you look at her life. She was no person that was really qualified to give any message. But do you know who qualified her? Jesus. Jesus. Because he covers us with his righteousness. You may be looking at your life tonight and you say, you see me? I can't be no committed Christian, eh? I can't be no faithful Christian because I know me. I'm going to mess up. I'm going to go wrong. That is your past. Jesus says, I have a future for you. I have a message to give you. I have a message that you can give to every single man, woman, boy, and girl. It is a message of a resurrected Savior. It is a message that he wants to give to every man and woman here tonight. Ask yourself, settle it in your spirit. Do I want to be a messenger? Oh, yes. Do I want to be a messenger for Jesus? Oh, yes. I remember in my own personal experience that there was a point in my Christian life I felt a year I was unworthy. An unworthy vessel to present for God. I felt as though that my life had too many issues for me to be called and used by God. I remember one Sabbath morning as I woke up drenched in tears and I talked to God. <laughs> the first song that he gave me was a song that simply says, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. For every person gathered under this tent tonight, for every person listening online just by the way of hearing a message, for whatever experience you are going through, or might have gone through, your God still desires to use you. He has a message for you. You say, me? Yes, you. God has a message for you. Tonight, if you believe that that message <laughs> needs to be delivered now, I invite you to rise to your feet. Five to six. They call him Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard the message. And perhaps to some, this message seems all about a female. This message is not just about women, this message is about every man, woman, boy, and girl who in spite of your mistakes God wants to use you but sometimes in order for God to use you you have to be broken deeply and when you are broken you are able to tell people it was bad with me but God has been good and so tonight you've heard the word and you want to say Lord I want to give my life to you. I want to give everything to you. I want to go all the way in baptism with you. We're making that call first. Won't you come to the altar as we sing because he lives? God sent his son. God sent his they called him Jesus. He came to land. Somebody's here tonight and you want to give your life to Christ. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Won't you come? 
Pray for my family that my family will be strengthened in the Lord. Let's go to the second verse. Sing the song, baby, if you know it. You find his arms open wide. You see him and all of your darkness will end. Somebody's coming. Somebody's coming. Time after time. He's waiting. He's waiting. And now he's waiting. Oh, to see if you're willing. Ladies and gentlemen, we must understand that Christ opens and offers his great love and his grace. And he says that you are free to accept. He can only be in a love relationship with you if you want it to happen. Uh-huh. He says, I love you with an everlasting love. And some of us are wondering about the things or where we have gone wrong. He says, I come. Let us use them together. Though your sins be as scarlet, it shall be white as snow. Though it be red like crimson, it shall be as well. Once again, he's waiting. He's waiting again. We'll take the first verse. And the chorus as Pastor prepares to be Maybe you're online and perhaps you want to talk to somebody. This is a message. Send us a message so that we can reach out to you. Send us your name, your contact. We're going to put a number in the chat, even now. Reach out and we'll talk to you. Talk to you. He's waiting. He's waiting. And now he's waiting. What is he waiting for? To see if you're willing. To open. To open. To open. To open. To open. To open. To To open. To open. To open. To open. To open. To open. Good God and Father, tonight we are grateful for your word. Indeed, there is power in the word of Jesus. Power to change. Power to transform. Power to cleanse. Power to restore. Father, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Tonight, Lord, we are happy for those who have responded to the word. Tonight, we've come like Mary, and we are not satisfied by just searching, but we will be satisfied when we find you for ourselves. Tonight, Lord, I pray that you will quench our thirsty soul. You will fill our hungry minds. And you restore the broken hearted. And so tonight, God, we are grateful for this altar. Because at the altar, we can receive forgiveness. At the altar, we can receive restoration and transformation. 
And so, Father, tonight there is someone who has come to this altar uh, because they are broken. And so, Father, I pray that you will mend the broken hearts. Uh, there is someone who has come here with a financial problem. I pray, God, that you will help them to understand that the cattle upon a thousand years belong to Jesus. There is a mother who is here who is broken. I pray, God, that you will meet her at her point of need. There is someone who is having a marital issue. And it seems as if their marriage is about to hit rock bottom. But Father, help them to understand that you are the rock at the bottom. I pray God that you will help us to understand that we should not allow our plans to define our purpose. Uh, because you have a great purpose for our lives. And so we are grateful for this white cathedral. With an evangelist as Pastor Newsom who has been declaring your word night after night under the powers and the proclivity of the Holy Spirit. And so, Father, I pray that you will touch our hearts and help us to respond to the gospel commission. All you're asking us is to come. Come who may. Come those who are thirsty. Come those who are hungry. Come those who are broken so that we can be mended by the powers of the gospel. Bless your people tonight. I pray God that as we depart here tonight that we will go home unsettled knowing that the only way we can receive a true settlement is by accepting the gospel of Jesus so that our lives can be changed, so that we can be at ease. Help us to understand God that even if we don't have everything, we can still come. Because there are many who have come with nothing, but they have received more than something, and that is Jesus. We don't need to have rice in our pots. We don't need to have monies in our bank account. As long as we have Jesus, we have everything. And so we thank you, Lord, for what you have done. And we magnify your name for what you will do for us even now. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. I want to tell you something very special that is going to happen tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, I want everyone to come in sneakers. All right? Everyone come in sneakers. We're going to be doing the topic, a woman running out of time. A woman running out of time. All together. So come in your sneakers. Come in your boots. Long boots for boots running. Boots sneakers. Come into sneakers, right? School sneakers, night sneakers, come and be blessed as we look at a woman running out of time. God bless you, God keep you as we meet again.